Okay, that was a minty little frog sesh uh, Brian Gustafson and I had tonight. Um, didn't really feel like talking to a camera out there. Um, partially because the weather was not great and partially because we were just having fun. So I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown of what was going on and what we're using out there to catch these large mall. Um, so in the lake we went to, the water was rushing high. Uh, it's been climbing steady the last few days. Um, the Bass Fishing Handbook says when that happens, large mall go with it. They get up into the bushes, they get up into the backs of the bogs, um, under rushes, uh, and it's a super fun time to go catch them. Um, one of the best approaches is to use a poppin' frog. Um, just make short little pitches to isolated targets and get as many casts in as you can going down the bank um, and have a flipping stick ready to go to. So like I said, popping frog, that was the number one bait tonight. This is a Spro Bronze Eye. Um, this seems to be kind of the best one, the, the classic. It's been around forever. Um, pretty simple. One cool tip on these popping frogs. Brian showed me this like eight years ago. He picked it up from one of his buddies down south. Uh, is to trim the legs on them on just on one and what that does is allows that bait just to walk so much easier you wouldn't believe the difference it makes just that one small adjustment um, one thing we also do on tournament day is make a small incision in the top of your frog and that just lets air come out easy when when a fish hits it um, if you're fun fishing uh, especially around here, you're going to deal with a bunch of pike on these things anyway, so you don't really need to do that. The pike are going to naturally do that for you. Uh, but if you got a brand new frog and it's tournament morning, then that's a good idea too. So try that out. Uh, one other thing, an alternative is these Z-Man pop shads. Um, you know, a, you can put a single hook in them. Uh, they're not, people aren't going to get snagged in all these bushes because you got to be a pretty good caster to do well around this stuff. Um, and one other thing is the hookups are really good on them with that single hook. So um, check those out. They're kind of a cool thing. One of the biggest misconceptions with your rod and reel um, when it comes to frog fishing is everyone always wants to go heavy. Um, I was guilty of it too. We used to use big 7-Eleven pool cues with guides on them and set the hook as hard as we can with 65 to 80 pound braid and would catch like one in four fish that bit. It was pretty embarrassing. Um, now we've scaled her down. We're using a G Loomis NRX 894. Um, it's like a medium heavy uh, flipping stick. Um, I use Corrado's, Brian was using Metaniums. Uh, as long as it's got a beefed up gear ratio and it says Shimano on it, it's gonna be pretty good. Um, 65 pound braid. You, lots of guys get away with 50. It's a little bit nicer to cast and it, it does cut through the weeds better if that's an issue. Um, but I'm so used to 65 and I like to lean on them. I'm a big guy too, so I don't want to be busting off um, a bass because my braid's breaking. You can get all this stuff at uh, sports headquarters. So wheel down there, check it out and yeah, go see the big uh, wall of frogs. And get a bunch of frogs too, cause Pike like these things a lot.
Man, it hit like beside this cattail though. Like, I'm like positive. Right, way out here? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> no <Yeah>. way! <laughs> I don't know the cat. How many leeches? There's one. Ah! <laughs> Don't find the leeches till day two. Oh, there's another one. <laughs>